Welcome to the Mixed Bag Podcast with me, Nio. Nice to have you. Welcome back. Um, today we've got a special episode, which is, I mean, they're all special in their own way, aren't they? Uh, but this is with Anna Morgan. And we, this was actually recorded originally as part of my um, radio show for Swoo FM. So if anybody didn't know, I also have a radio show <laughs> on Swoo FM. And uh, she did a guest mix for us. Um, and it was one of those things where we kind of, at least we started off very kind of like radio interviewee and then we did that bit and then we just kept talking and the mic kept rolling and actually we went on such an interesting journey that I really was like actually I think this is going to be a really nice podcast um because it just really filled me with such joy like so so to give you a bit of an overview I met Arna Morgan through um, our mutual friend Addison Groove uh, when I was playing at his Barrel Stream Festival uh, virtually last year because everything was virtual and she's just awesome um, and we kind of got chatting and this is the first time we'd ever spoken you know we've been doing some of the online Instagram chat and all that stuff but this is the first time we actually got to have a discussion and there's just something so wonderful that happens when you get to speak to someone for the first time and it just flows and there's just a really nice connection and yeah for for anyone who's interested in DJing this is going to be good for you we talk a little bit about um, DJing and about uh, when we've sort of come up against problems and how we've got through them also in terms of DJing in the industry as a woman what those struggles have been how we've got through them And then we really end talking a bit more about spirituality and our place in the world. And yeah, I had no idea where it was going to go. And I was so happy that it went to this place. Um, Because at the time of this, um, the intro of this recording, it's um, the day after the verdict for um, George Floyd's murderer. And that came with, it comes with a lot of conflicting emotions, actually. It comes with a lot of, um, yeah, complex feelings of relief and anger and frustration and sadness. And I woke up this morning and I just wanted to listen to this podcast. <laughs> um, and I thought, OK, I think this is a good time to put it out because we also talk about... Um, yeah kind of how we've all just been through it really we've been through a really tough time um and i feel like we're still kind of all finding our feet and there's a bit of anxiety now the world's starting to open up again so i just thought this would be a really good time to put this out we also in it's in celebration of april which as far as i'm concerned is the new new year because loud january um spring is springing flowers are coming out there's a new that feels like a change in the air and yeah i thought this would be a really nice podcast to go out on hi nayo hi bristol <laughs> how are you doing um i'm doing well it's uh it's like 2 a.m on a wednesday night and i'm talking to you and you bring me life actually oh um so i'm doing well how are you <laughs> yeah i would it's it's been a bit mad to be fair it's uh mm-hmm. yeah that was a particularly particularly crazy little uh little snippet there but yeah overall feeling like it's, it's funny actually i was speaking to my friend the other day and they were saying that april is actually the start of the new year because mm-hmm. obviously that's new financial year but it's also that you know it's the beginning of spring it's the end of like you know all the stuff that's gone before and i'm really feeling like that i feel like we're going into a new phase of life and i'm feeling good about that i feel like that's the spring energy right Mm. spring cleaning there's a sense of renewal like you kind of people tend to um kind of like return to their like new year's resolutions or things Mm -hmm. that maybe they like lost some motivation towards i like that i like that yeah yeah the new year exactly and i think you know the sun i mean obviously the sun's out where you are because you're in hawaii Um, (laughs) yeah i mean it's been actually i live in a in a rainy kind of moist valley so it's Ah. been like raining every day for a few weeks so we're just kind of coming out of it. I had like a really intense like two week period where I just had like had crazy deadlines and I couldn't do anything. And I was complaining yeah. to my friend like I was like, I feel like I'm missing all the rainbows. I haven't <laughs> seen a rainbow in like two weeks. And he's like, oh, girl, you're not missing anything. There's just, it's just raining. And I'm like, oh, okay. There's Bye. just rain. There's no bow. It's just the rain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, nice. Because it's funny, isn't it? Because it's like whenever I picture um, places, especially if I've never been there before, you have this idea of what it is. So, yeah, when I think of Hawaii, I obviously think of, you know, beaches and sunshine and uh, uh, like all of the, yeah, the kind of the holiday images that you get given, which obviously, you know, isn't the whole. I mean, it's that, it's that too. It's that too. There's, it's, it's funny because there's a lot of different climates on the island. So it can be like pouring where my house is and like 10 minutes away by the ocean. It's like bright and sunny oh, that's incredible so when did you move out there because it's been a fairly recent move hasn't it uh i just got back here like mid-december i wanted to like be someplace like new and fresh as i was kind of starting a new life in a sense during the new year mm. so i was like let me get out there before 2021 starts yeah nice and start where you want to finish right like start where you want to have that new adventure mm-hmm, exactly I really feel like there's been that that vibe, you know, as um, you know, people kind of taking the chance to go and do things that they haven't necessarily done before and be in places they haven't necessarily been before and, and actually just taking control of our adventure, you know, rather than kind of feeling stuck in the life that we had before, which I think is really nice about this time, although obviously the pandemic's been awful. I've seen a You're lot of people such take such a sweet yeah like a, what a what a sweet and wholesome <laughs> lovely perspective um i'm not disagreeing with you um but, <laughs> but it is, it's, it's kind of more like um i don't have to tour right now like i don't have to mm. be anywhere so um and i was kind of going through some stuff where i was so it just was like well if i don't have to physically be anywhere and i have no idea when i am going to be places again like let me go yeah. to the place that i just want to be in yeah um this is my favorite place so nice so you talked a little bit yeah around touring so yeah talk to us about your amazing career because obviously i found out about you through tony and through the barrel stream and then connecting with you um through the stream and yeah and then just sort of looked into all the things that you do and i was like oh my gosh this chick is a badass like what is going on how have i not found you before so yeah tell us about your awesomeness please all my awesomeness yeah wow. your awesomeness <laughs> and don't be modest um i am um, i'm a dj producer uh promoter uh radio host um and uh, I also co-run a label called Worst Behavior Rex uh, mm-hmm. with another woman called Bell Curve, who's also another DJ um, producer. We throw parties in New York City and um, we put out tunes by our friends. Amazing. Uh, we kind of are considered sort of left field bass. Mm. Um, I, um, so generally, um, you know, uh, other besides the last year, um, I, on the weekends, I'm typically like touring in different cities. I've traveled a lot internationally, like, mm, like maybe about four years in a row. I play like Outlook Festival, um, and, uh, and then like Base Coast, which is like a Canadian like base festival and a bunch of ones up and down the West Coast. I'm from New York City. Um, so, you know, working there pretty regularly, kind of all over the U.S. Um, I've toured in Asia, South Asia, Russia, Eastern Europe. Um, I've only played a few cities, actually, in the in the U.K. I've just played in, like, Leicester and uh, Bristol. Leicester, that is so random. So <laughs> random, right? It's like my homie John first, actually. Um, and a group, a, a, a record shop uh, over there, um who like put on the show they were just like oh you're gonna be outlook again this year do you want to like come play and i was like yeah that sounds cool why not let's hang amazing so how yeah i mean first of all like how was it setting up your own label because and why why did you decide to go down that route because it's it's a it's a big commitment right it's quite a big thing to do it is um it wasn't actually um it was really because um my uh, my partner in the label, Bell Curve, and I like we she, basically like we met, and I think she wanted to do a label, and I think she just didn't want to do it on her own, mm. and she kind of wasn't really doing much. Like no one was aware of what she was doing, or you know she wasn't really doing much. Um, so I think she just was like, "Hey, will you do this thing with me?" Um, and I was, we were, I basically I had booked a, I had booked out a 
a DJ lineup. Like I organized and scheduled a, a small festival in El Salvador. Mm. And I booked another Jamaican girl actually from um, Boston called Rakita. And she brought Bell Curve. And that's how we met. And um, that was her first time going to a festival. And first time seeing, I booked a lot of women. And it was her first time really seeing like a lot of women DJing, which is mm. something that like, is really important to me mm-hmm. in terms of my curation. Um, and so was really inspired by it and was like, I want to do this. And I think that was the first year I was playing at Outlook. I had like a guest pass, like an extra one. And I had like room in my Airbnb. So I was like, yeah, just come with me. Um, and then while we were there, I had made some edits to play in my set because I was, I had basically decided that I was going to play like a 160, like footwork. Nice set because I was like I normally play a lot of like sound system like in UK like mm. producers but I was like I'm not gonna go to a UK bass festival and play their music they're already right there <laughs> doing that so what do I have that's specifically North American that like no one else on this lineup is gonna bring because for some reason on the lineup they put my city next to my name like I'm no one else had a city <laughs> next to their name and then for some reason it said Anna Morgan in parentheses New York City and I was like <laughs> okay does that mean I'm supposed to like rep like New York hard <laughs> which is like part of what I do anyway but like still so I um, so what I did was I made some edits where I made like like 160 edits of like like grime classics and like uh, dubstep classics and like Thanks. tunes that were a couple of tunes that were big at the moment because I was like, okay, I'm going to, sh- you know, give these kids something they haven't heard, but I'll give them some samples on top of it that they can like get down with and they'll like get it, you know. Um and then I need these of- edits. I'm all, I'm literally as you're oh. speaking. I'm like, where do I get these edits? Because I think it's so. And this is one of the reasons that I want to learn how to produce as well. You know, it's a very slow process, but I'm enjoying it. I'm um, just the learning of it. But it's because I love that, of, like being able to put together things that have inspired you but put your own twist on it and like when I first started DJing I always used to mix together like afro beats and garage that was like my my thing because I was like because it didn't make sense like I knew that it didn't make sense but I was like I want this to make sense and I loved it because so many people who came would either come for the afro beats and hear old school garage or would come for old school garage and then hear afro beats and they were like how like what what is this like how like what is this multi-genre and I was like but that's what's exciting to me it's getting people to hear things that they recognize but then also discover new sounds yeah I completely agree with you um I think it's great to be able to I think in this way like I don't know like I being like a like a, a like a mixed like race and mixed culture person mm. i tend to really love hybrids yes of stuff you know like yes. it, and like i've never played like you know a set that was just like a one genre thing either yeah. and yeah. i and i and i and i you know i've thought a lot about like how come like why is that and i think it, honestly it just has to do with like feeling like there's multiple sides of me that need to be expressed for exactly. me to like be authentic yes and uh and i feel like it's uh like like that's just kind of what you end up resorting to doing it's like how do i you know and then Mm. it's like a lot of people say like oh there's nothing new like you don't hear anything new with music or with that or with this we're in 2021 but i think that the way that we do hear innovations is like these blending of things Mm. that you know have already come that might seem really distant or you know definitely and I i love what you say that around yeah, the mixed, the mixedness, because I, I feel exactly the same, you know, as like I'm, I've, I've always grown up with two very different cultures, like right. always within my headphones and, you know, within the way that I see myself, you know, I look in the mirror and I see two, like two, two, I see an English person and an African person and, that, and that's right. both of who I am. So it's like when I was choosing what kind of music I want to produce and play, it was like, if, yeah, exactly as you say, for it to be authentic. I want to be able to put all of those different sides of myself into music. And I don't want to feel like I have to choose because in this space, I don't have to choose. I mean, I don't have to choose anyway. And I, and I choose not to choose, but you know what I mean? Like that's, what's really exciting for me. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to put dubstep into Afro house and try yeah. and stop me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I love that. And I think also that's what is refreshing for people, you know, because then you do hear, you hear what what influenced someone's like someone's sound and and that's what i've always loved about music because i think it's that real exchange of experience you know it's like these these are the things that i've experienced in 
in what I've listened to and what I've been exposed to. And then I'm sharing that with the world. And I think that's such a gift that we get to do that and learn about each other's cultures and backgrounds through music. Yeah, I agree with you. Or at least this is, I mean, how I approach it. And I think how I'm often listening to it, obviously not everyone is on the same page as us. I think that's one of the yeah. reasons why what you do really resonates with me. Thank you. you know, because Thank you. we share a perspective in that sense. Like how, how did you start getting into edits? Like what was that, what was that journey? What was that transition like? Okay. Yeah. So it was like, while I would be DJing or like, um, I, I would play, I would basically, when I first started DJing, I just would take every gig and I was mostly mm. getting booked in like what was called or considered like the global base and yeah. global club circuit in New York city. And so I was playing a party called ESO, which is mostly like a lot of Latin, Latin it's like Caribbean, but mostly a lot of Latin sounds. Nice. But I tend to play a lot more like um, West Indian and African. I'm half mm. Jamaican. So like, you know, that's kind of like my background. So mm. what I did was when I was preparing for this one set is I downloaded all these Dembo loops. <laughs> nice. that someone had sent me and so i just was like playing dance hall but just like putting all these dembo loops on top of it <laughs> to like kind of make it like reggaeton you know like and yeah. i was like and so i just was doing that with like everything like despite the bpm i was just like i'll just throw these dembo loops on top of it it's gonna make it latin and then like from doing that there were certain blends where like people like dj friends were coming up to me and be like who made that edit and I was like oh I'm just doing that like with this loop right now like yeah. you know and then I was like oh I should actually just turn this into an edit and then Dang. so I started doing those and I didn't know that you could like upload them and like people wanted them or that was like a, even like a very kind of legit thing you could do because technically <laughs> for me, it's like someone else's stuff you know uh, yeah, and yeah. uh and then I was uh Dr. Jeep who's a friend of mine in New York has always been super supportive and encouraging oh my god like, love that, Dr. Jeep I refound, isn't he amazing I refound Dr. Jeep's edit of Night by Ben and Crow because Oh, so good the warehouse oh, edit yes literally yes. I, like we found it in an ipod that had died like years ago and <laughs> somehow someone had brought it back to life and so i was going back to the shows and i was like oh my gosh like yeah i've, I've been i've literally been rinsing that in the past three of my mixes <laughs> yeah he i mean i feel like he makes such good edits but yeah. obviously he's an incredible producer yeah um continues to just like be an incredible producer and someone who really really cares about the craft of DJing as well like his mm -hmm. his sets are so incredible and well like thought out and um huge inspiration to me and so basically he invited me to do a radio show with him and after the Sick. set he was like I feel like we have the same exact taste do you produce and I was like kind of like and he's like come to my house and like bring your projects or whatever let me see what you've been doing oh so gosh. I like got my laptop and he kind of went through some of my tune my half half finished tunes or like my sketches and some of my edits and he was like basically gave me a ton of advice on how to finish some stuff I I was stuck with at the time and then also was just like um I have this like one edit where I just took like some Doc Scott drums from like a classic Doc Scott tune um and put it on top of this dance hall Miss O tune and he was like, I love this. Like, and I was like, it's literally just like, I didn't, oh God, I, just, like, I made it in Toronto. Like, it was just like, you know, like messing around and it just like worked. And he was like, yeah, but it works so well. He's like, give it to me. And I was like, okay. And so like he played it on like Red Bull radio the next day. And, like, anytime I would go see his gig, he would like play one of my edits or Amazing. one time like at Base Coast Festival, he played like three in a row with like, a bunch of like there was like sam binga sinistar like yeah. alex Perez, like all these producers on stage like that i love oh. you know like and i was just, like and they were all like this is yours and i was like yeah and they're like, <laughs> like props and i was like what yeah so like that that dude's been super supportive and like a real real like godsend like even now he's someone i trust and i think that mm. this is just a little advice for for anyone out there making music is you should always have someone like you really trust to bounce yeah you know like your tracks off of like he gives he gives really great advice and feedback too like he's one of the people i send when i'm working on a track before i send it in as done nice. i usually send it in. like can you rip this apart please yeah <laughs> can you can you help me see what i hate about it so that i can love exactly. it even more Exactly. And I think it's also so important to have someone who's going to be the person to encourage you as well, you know, and especially Absolutely. Like, your respect. And I remember like, like Tony, um, Addison Groove was really one of those people because, you know, I think it was when I saw him DJ in like South America. 
And like, bearing in mind, we'd already been mates for like two years and I'd like never seen him DJ, which is <laughs> And I was seeing him DJ and I was like, oh my God, these tunes are great. And then I was like, oh my God, I know some of these tunes. And I was like, maybe I can do that. And then, uh, you know, he came, he came back and then we did a radio show together on Ujima. And he was just like, you can do this. Like you can, you could absolutely do this. And I think then after I'd learned how to DJ, he, I was supporting him at a, at a gig and I was like, this is mind blowing. Cause like three years ago I was like, Oh my gosh, look, maybe I could DJ one day. And I'm supporting this guy that I have huge respect for. Um, and yeah, after that, he was like, Oh, you should come and do like, you know, we should do more things. And I was like, okay. And it's funny because you do need those people who are going to see you and go, you can do this and Absolutely. you're good at this. And you know, this is, this is something that you, you don't need to feel like an imposter in because i also think that imposter syndrome can so be a thing that makes you go oh i kind of produce like oh i kind of want to dj it's like no like you are producing you are a dj like you just need to know that you're doing the right thing and that this is a space that you absolutely will thrive in yeah i completely agree with you i i i feel like i've been lucky to have a lot of that kind of support around me like i, I wasn't really setting out when i first kind of started djing like to be a dj it was really yeah. a suggestion of a, a good friend of mine in the global bc scene in new york called jero Barra, um who i'd seen him play and i saw him play like four tunes in his set that I'd never heard on a system before. I'd never heard them nice. outside of my house or like yeah. outside of my own headphones. And I never thought anyone could put them in the same set. <laughs> and this guy like played that. And I was just like, I was watching this and I'm on the dance floor and I was like, wow, if I was going to DJ, I would want to do it like this. Right. Yes. Um, and, uh, and so then after we became friends and he was like, why don't you DJ? And I was like, cause we have a lot of those, you know, I'm like, mm. I'm good with just like throwing parties and just like, you know, a lot yeah. of people knew me as a dancer in the scene for a long time. Um, so, you know, I was like, yeah, we have enough of those. And he's like, but we don't have a lot of women in bass music. Mm. And I feel like you could really have a lot to contribute. He's like, it really only takes 20 songs to make a mix. Come yeah. on. Amazing. And so I was like, oh yeah. Yeah. Why not? Why, why not? And, and uh, yeah, it's exactly the same. Cause I, I think I'd never, I'd, I'd never seen a woman of color DJing before. I think that was quite a big thing. And it wasn't until I saw Jam Supernova play. I love festival. her. She's so great. Shout out I to love Jam. Her so like, much. I love oh my God. Her time. label is killing it. Absolutely killing it. Like if you haven't heard it, Future Bounce, like go and listen. Like um KG is on there and like I mean who I play all the time. Also. I mean everyone. And yeah. also like Jams is just so one of those people who is always supported. Do you know what I mean? Like she um uh, made my re uh, remixes EP pick of the week on her show like she's always been about trying to like bring other people up with her you know and especially think, women especially, especially other people women. in color yeah um, exactly. yeah she represents hard she's so great but like it was when i saw her i was like oh like we're allowed to do this <laughs> like like this is weird isn't it because it's like i hadn't thought that i didn't see myself there but i also hadn't seen myself there and then it was only from yeah kind of people saying well why why not you that I was like, yeah, actually, why, why not me? And I kind of was in that same space of I, there's loads of DJs and people just knew me in the scene by that point. It's just the person who's just like always there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I was just yeah, like, yeah, always yeah. in the rave. Yeah. I was always in the green room. Like I was just about. So like when I actually started DJing, I was like, oh my God, how nice to have like a purpose. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like not just being here for the rave, but actually being here. And then and it was also really nice as well because I kind of felt like, all those people that kind of just been waiting for me to to step into that so yeah. they then were like okay you're doing it like let's get you on some lineups and it was so nice to be able to go there and be in that space and even though I was you know normally the only woman um which is something that you know has, has been really important to me in sort of creating my own um crew and night and promoting and stuff they were still all my friends so even though I was the only woman I could be like well I still feel safe here and I still feel able to like start questioning some lineups now i think it's been a really good thing for the scene having more um women in it you know because it's made it more obviously more diverse but it's also made it a richer culture for everybody for audience members for the people behind the decks for people promoting like i just feel like the amount of interesting sets that i'm seeing now um is really down to that kind of wanting to diversify and wanting it to not always be the same people on the same lineups playing the same songs yeah i agree with you i mean i 
I also same hadn't really seen I'm I don't I mean just in general like on TV or anywhere yeah. you know I'm 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 black and Asian there's not you just don't mm-hmm. see that that mm-hmm. often and like and so I mean I went out as a kid I had like one actress I kind of was like kind of looked like me yeah. <laughs> like, but like um but yeah I so um I do think that that has something to do with uh why you kind of I got into DJing like I was like 30 years old when I started DJing oh you know, that's like, so good to hear yeah. oh my gosh yes I love to hear it because the reason I'm jumping so hard on that I'm so sorry to cut you but because I we need to see more things like this. We need to hear more about people doing new stuff past the age of 21. There's so yeah. much stuff where it's like up until 25, it's like, yeah, great. But like, it still keeps going. Like we keep learning, do you know what I mean? Whether it's music or about ourselves or about social interaction, whatever it is, like we continue to learn. And I love hearing people say like, I learned something. Or I started learning something at, you know, above 20 because well sorry above 25 because I think that's one of the things that held me back from trying to produce for such a long time so I was like oh my god I'm, I'm already over 30 I'm not going to be any good until I'm 35 and then I'm over it and it's like bum that thinking man like that's such a ridiculous way to think I mean it's how we're programmed to think but like I love that I love I love yeah that. my friend actually yesterday I was having I went to this like uh, b-boy competition out here and I saw a bunch of like homies we haven't haven't seen in a while and uh one of my friends was talking about how um he just got this uh, like a keyboard i forget some some software program that like allows you to play not like in tune it doesn't matter like how you play like you're just like in tune or something and he was like yeah you should come over and play with this thing and he was like you know when i was younger like i mean he's talking about like you know high school age yeah he was like i knew like these kids you know i had a friend who could just play any instrument and play anything and so i was like i'm not going to try to do music Mm. you know because like think about that like when you were like even in high school there were all these kids that had already been playing the piano since they were three or you know doing like dance or whatever since they were four and so and you're still kind of taught to compare yourself to these people so you're uh-huh. just like why, why am i going to start doing this now like look at all this you know who yeah. i'm up against but the fact is they might give that up in a few years exactly you know what i mean like or it doesn't like and there's so many other factors that have to do with success like your mm-hmm. passion you know and your authenticity and your unique voice yes takes you further really Absolutely. than like any kind of training and also i guess your network like you kind of talked about you know you were in the scene for a while and people already knew that was actually a very similar thing for me i was in the scene for a long time and similarly it was just like all my friends were pr- promoters and djs so like once i started djing they were just like all right come play at my party yeah and right. I feel really fortunate because it's not the case with most of my friends, you know, who kind of mm-hmm. struggle um, in the DJ world to, you know, or producers, you know, who just struggle to like be like, oh, I don't, they don't even like DJing. They just like have this art that they need to get out there. And so like, I guess I have to DJ so people can hear my art. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so it's fortunate, you know, I knock on wood. It's it's lucky to to kind of have fallen into it in that sense absolutely Um, and i think you know yourself better when you're older as well so actually mm -hmm. like you say like having your unique voice like you know yourself in a way that you didn't necessarily know yourself when you were a child so even though you were you know if if we take yeah like sort of learning how to play a classical instrument by the age of four like yeah okay you're going to be excellent at that but will you be able to get out of that mindset of playing it in exactly that way or will you be able to be experimental and actually a lot of the people who i know who grew up and did like um classical and jazz at like in an educational sense find it really hard to get out of that very rigid mindset because there's mm-hmm. very rigid ways of making music so then like a lot of them are actually trying to unlearn that learning now in order to be um yeah like unique and 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 make their own sound and not just like replicate other people's sounds and i think there's such a vulnerability f- with doing something that you're not good at you know, and having to yeah. learn and having to have the humili- humility to go back to something and go, I don't know how to do this. I'm just going to have to be bad at it for a while. And I'm so bad at being bad at stuff. <laughs> I'm so bad at it. I'm just like, no, be good. But it's really important. You know, it's really important. It's really important. To do that. Yeah, I think it's really important for us to put ourselves through that, if not just to not get Alzheimer's when we're older. Exactly. <laughs> exactly yeah you know what's really funny which is hilarious because i don't think we look anything alike but i was watching you dj at barrel fest with my mother 
out oh. here and we were just like watching on my phone while we were eating and my mom was like oh is that you and I was like you think that looks like me and she was like yeah the way she moves and I was like no oh. that's not me mom I'm like five feet tall I'm like a t really small like petite person so I just thought that was funny that my mom was like is that you <laughs> Oh my god, that's hilarious! That but then I so got, wonderful. I kind of got like, but like vibe wise in a way. I was like, okay, I kind of guess what you're saying because she dances yeah. when she's playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was yeah. thinking actually when you were playing, I was like, um, when you were doing your set on Barrelfest as well, I was like, yes, I just, I'm all about the movement, you know, the movement when you're DJing and just to like seeing how into the songs people are. Like, it make that gives me so much life. Like, the music gives me life, and then that on top gives me just like so much energy, and it just like makes you feel like you're soaking up all the energy from their set it's great yeah it's infectious i mean and sometimes people are not they don't know to get excited until they see you being excited right? and then this they're like all oh, right i should be lit this yeah. is it <laughs> she's having this is it like i just sound like i could be alone in a room djing and i'd be having as much fun as when i'm on stage like, <laughs> like that like very little of that is performer like most of that is just me being like enjoying the music and the myself music. yeah <laughs> because i'm also like i feel like i've got a little bit in a rut with my music do you, do you ever find that i'm like uh, i need to start getting more stuff but then it's because i haven't really had time to go looking well but. see okay i'm gonna speak about this um for like a second because i was just saying to my friend because i had a mix that I was I'm supposed to give um, for like uh, like by Thursday mm. that's supposed to come out on Friday and uh, for this Canadian like promo company or whatever mm. actually it was one of the last shows like they had booked me with like Sicaria Sound in Toronto oh, sick um, and uh, and so uh, but that show didn't happen it got cancelled so the mm. last show that I had planned in New York was Sherelle Sicaria Sound nice um, do you know homemade weapons no oh he's like my favorite like stateside drum and bass producer oh sick um, yeah he's like a like a latin dude from um seattle and he or actually it's portland he's from portland but he his shit is just like it's like dark halftime stuff so it's the the rhythm of it like the halftime dmb stuff i love because it's like that dance hall three three two yeah. you know pattern yeah. and it so I feel it feels like so earthy to me, um, and uh, and yeah. So it was so yes. Yeah, Sicaria sound, Sherelle, homemade weapons, and then we had a local girl called Red Daughter. Um, she's like native club DJ um, who does who like in one set will go anywhere from like '90s grunge to like like dance hall to footwork to Amazing. drum and bass to like noise like just a sick dj super <laughs> sick dj really good storyteller and this is actually just something i wanted to say when you had brought up like you know the about the diversity and like um in the scene and stuff because of the increase in women mm. i honestly like love how women like i love hearing like new djs play when they don't know like quote unquote like the rules yes and they just like they're just like mixing like when you hear like early sets where people are just like mixing whatever the fuck they're into <laughs> yeah. and, like and no one told them yet like you're not supposed to do that yeah, you know yeah. like i love that shit yeah. like i really love it i find it really inspiring and um and i think that like uh um, and I noticed that a lot more women are more, they're less like linear with their, mm -hmm. with the way that they mix. They're more like storytelling rather yes. than just like, here's a genre, here's a BPM and yes. we're just going to play this. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot, like that's what I grew up listening to a lot. Cause I, I grew up like going to raves since I was like 14 years old. So it was mm -hmm. like in the scene, in the scene. So I listen, I would, and then when I go to sets, like I would, I would go to parties like stone cold sober the whole time, super intently listening, you know? And yeah. like, um and um and i and so yeah you would be like you know the same like okay like you're gonna hear whatever like so you're gonna hear tech house it's literally just like that's the vibe like mm -hmm. every song like it's this vibe but then when i started hearing you know jubilee yeah 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 so i started following her around pretty young because she 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 booked this guy he now goes by like uh doodoo king doodoo okay you okay. know this guy no he does. He's ma he's making like kind of like Dembo Club. It's a, like Ooh. a little dark. Uh, he's like a French producer that now goes by King King Doo Doo D O U D O U. I think you would like his stuff. Nice, yeah. Um, 
and um and he um but he was going by douster before okay and so he was like a baby like and he was doing his first north american tour so i went to this party that had booked him in brooklyn and jubilee was throwing the party and i saw her play and she was playing like you know sean paul and techno and uk <laughs> funky and dance hall and like um ballroom like all in the same set yeah and like miami bass and i was like not really that used to hearing that either mm. i was just like i'm just gonna follow this girl around like every time she would throw a party i just would be there and that was again like when i started finding these djs in new york that were playing like how i how i was like yeah if i was gonna play music i would want to do it like this just play yeah. all the shit exactly you know fuck a bpm fuck a genre yeah and like and i'll, I'll the bpm like in the middle of a track i'll just like speed it up do you know what i mean I <laughs> saying to me being like i really love how you don't give a shit about bpm and again i was like i didn't know that you were supposed to like if i need to transition <laughs> i'll fucking transition like i don't give a shit about how it sounds <laughs> like because yeah you're just enjoying it and like it was funny we had someone um a really uh sick dj like she's been learning for a while and she sent me um, a mix and like, I didn't know that she had been learning. Like as anyone, she sent it to me, I was like, oh wow. And same thing, I was listening to her, I was like, yes, like you are not sticking to any genre and I'm so into it. Like you're, and cause that also like it inspires what you do, you know? It's like, I, if I'm gonna listen to DJ mixes, I'll normally listen to ones where it's like, I've never heard that person before rather than keep going yeah. back to my same favorites. Cause it's like, I know that it'll be sick, but will I hear something new, you know? Right. Like, and even when like I put together DJ mixes, I'm like, what can I put in there that is going to be new? Like what is going to, what, what, what is going to be something that people won't have heard before? Like a blend they won't be expecting. Like that's what's exciting. And also like when you're picking your tracks, like sometimes I prep, but sometimes I just go with it. Cause like when you try, when you've got something in your mind and then you try and make it work and then it doesn't quite work, how you're expecting it. And then you've got to save it. Like, I love that moment. <laughs> like that tension. Yeah. And like, oh my God. Of the moment. yeah. And, it, and then it's like, I, I was listening back to mix the other day and I was like, I don't even know if I'll be able to do that blend again, because it was so in the moment that like, yeah like you know i don't know when i brought that in i don't know when i thought that was going to be a good idea but i made it work so it is sick but like yeah that, and that's the joy yeah i used to have a lot like it, it was a joke amongst my friends where i just would have like always like have these weird technical issues happen it, it, it at gigs and it got to the point where i just uh i was i became really adamant about um a tech writer and having three mm -hmm. cdjs just in case one of them was broken because i was playing in all these like underground like diy right. brooklyn spaces like when i first started djing and half the time like just the cdjs would be messed up yeah. i feel like that just happened so much that i was just like you know what like just give me you know <laughs> just give me three because i know one of them is gonna fuck up but yeah. like but at the same time there would be these crazy moments that would happen because like you know like the cdj just like stopped playing or like you know whatever or like you got like the um you know the you got like to the end of the chat you know what's that thing where it just starts looping all of a sudden yeah. and you have to like figure out how to like make that work in the mix with the dance floor is going and like just all these like weird things that would happen where you're just like i gotta make this work and i gotta make it seem like i meant to do it yeah like, uh, i remember like one of the worst of that is like i was playing at a boomtown um party and this guy was like oh i'm just gonna switch over the vinyl like switch over to vinyls and i was like cool he's like for the next dj i was like yeah cool but can you just do that like closer to like when my set is finishing because this is like halfway through he was like yeah. yeah cool and then like i looked away and i came and i and i and i like as i'm looking for the next tune i hear the tune that i'm on skipping and i was like well, what's happening and i looked around and he'd unplugged the cdj and i was right. like oh my gosh i like just that moment of panic of being like okay how long is it going to take for it to come back on where am i going to pick the other track from and just like that complete panic and i remember like like making it work and then looking out the dance floor and everyone was just going mad because they thought that i'd like done it on purpose and i was like right. yeah no absolutely not like that was a, a ride or die situation <laughs> So when you get to the other side of that and it really like creates something about like the energy of those moments like i remember yeah. like reading um like uh, a thing where this big like edm dj like bass nectar was talking about how like he notices like when he messes up and then recovers the energy like goes up you know like ah. in the space like, the energy goes, and i and then i started noticing like yeah like i used to like be really like 
uh like oh like because um i don't know i just i also had a lot of like dude friends from like the dmb world and they're just like mm -hmm. i would watch you know they're they're like the kind of dudes that stand with their arms folded like yeah. watching <laughs> early bj like judging everything like and so i would always be like i don't want to mess up like yeah. i don't want to you know like i'm ripping all the good ladies like, exactly I can't, I can't yeah and yeah. um and you know i can't be the reason dudes are like oh that's why girls can't dj you know exactly. what i mean exactly so, and that so i would be like do you have all this pressure on you and something like that and um and yeah i just would like but then i would notice that when you would have those moments where maybe like you know the mix was off a little bit and like you pull it back in like the room shifts like they yeah. feel they they feel there's like a little bit of phasing and then it and then it, when it snaps back in you know mm -hmm. into the groove and into sync that that creates an energy that's actually like a useful energy when we're talking about like a live event you know yeah like and i hadn't uh, even thought of it like that before but it's so true because i think also like your own energy is the dj as well like it changes because then you thought like there's almost like a a bit of a freedom that happens when that happens because mm -hmm. I, I like because i think in those moments like you gain confidence you know what i mean you're mm -hmm. like wow if yeah. i manage to make that work like who knows what i can do and i and i actually find that like yeah when i have those moments it's after that that i start doing more interesting mixes you know mm -hmm. i like it's after those moments that you start going okay well i'm not going to do the ones that i know will work i can come back to those if i really fuck this one up but like <laughs> actually like i'm just going to enjoy this moment but it's it's also like what you said about yeah like you're repping the ladies and that's how it feels it's like oh i i want to be experimental and i want to um be unique and i want to take chances but at the same time i don't want to be the reason that people stop booking women because <laughs> i feel like it's always kind of like there but i think it was um polo dj polo said to me he was like at the end of the day like it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks like you're not here like it doesn't it doesn't mean you're letting down anybody you're not letting down the promoter you're not letting down your friends you're not even letting down yourself like it's just what it is like you just yeah. need to like remove that frame of thinking and like and stop thinking that yeah you're an imposter here because you're not like you have every right to be here and again it's so weird when you need people to say that to you to go okay all right okay well if you're telling me that's true that's probably true but um but you do you know but i think yeah i think we totally do especially i mean i find that like women definitely tend to suffer from that a, yeah. a lot more i i used to make this joke like that i wish i wish i had the self-confidence of like a middle-aged like you know chubby like white dude yeah like yeah, i just yeah, i was just yeah. like if i just had like just a, like a percentage of that confidence yes. like you know like you where, you just, where like, i would be <laughs> yeah like where like i feel like dudes like they don't know how you know like they're just like oh yeah like they they like did something once and like i know how to do that yeah whereas like women are like oh i need to like go get some degrees in that before yeah. i start telling people i know what i'm talking about <laughs> yeah yeah because because you know but i think it was actually i think it might have been tony when i was talking to him about djing and i was like where did you learn and he was like at clubs and i was like yeah. what when people were paying to see you and he was like yeah and i was like wow like <laughs> imagine that being your testing ground at a paid gig and then i was like wow but like obviously how else do you learn and again it's just having I'm that thing of being it. like yeah. yeah and and actually learning what it's like and actually when i like set up the crew i remember saying to people like i'm here like i've got your back but don't be afraid of making mistakes and like learning from them because you are here to learn. And as much as you can learn when you're at home with your decks, practicing the same blends over and over and over, when you're actually in front of people, when you're in the club, when you're playing with equipment that isn't yours, when all these things can go wrong, like that's when you're really learning. Do you know what I mean? Like that's when you're putting all your learning into practice and that's when things will start to mess up. And um, it's been so amazing just seeing them grow you know, and just seeing them being able to go like, okay, yeah, this is going wrong. I know what to do because they've had that, that space, that safe space to just learn on the stage and gain that confidence. And yeah, I think until we have those spaces, we will just always think that we're not going to be good enough or, you know, we have the worst case scenario. And we might still always, I mean, like, uh, you know, I'd be lying if I don't have, say I didn't have moments like, yeah. where I, I, you know, like, I, I mean, I've had a, uh, like um when i first started djing you know like and getting gigs i was getting booked alongside like the people that really inspired me to dj mm -hmm. so it was really really like i was really really hard on myself mm -hmm. you know because i was just like yeah same where you're just like i don't i want i don't i don't want to embarrass 
like I don't want to disappoint anyone. I don't want to like disappoint the person booking. But I also just a lot of this programming has to do with just like how I was raised. Like I mean, like my dad. If I come home with an A, I'd be like, Dad, I got an A on this. And my dad would be like, Why isn't it an A plus? Mm, you know. Yeah, so yeah, I already yeah. have this conditioning, and I think it just follows you around. But like, you know, so I I do still like constantly like sometimes you know I have a gig where I'll just be like, Am I like? Why are they booking me? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's so bad that that feeling doesn't go away. You know? I don't think it goes away. I think it's just you just have to, you know, like. And I think in general, like, if you're dealing with that kind of stuff, like the self doubt or da da da, like, you hear those voices in your head. They never really go away. Like, you just start to like, you just start to learn how to be like, nah, that's bullshit. You yeah. know, like, exactly. just be like, I'm not gonna let that run me. I'm gonna do what I need to do regardless of the doubt and i mean that's what they call confidence really right it's like you you know like that's it's like you you, even though like you have fear and you you're afraid of some stuff like but the fact that you're just still pushing through it and you're doing the thing that you want to do like that's you know that's courage that's it oh god listen like what just filling me with just like yes uh, all of that all of that it's just so true and we yeah i think in this time it's been everyone's confidence has been knocked as well you know we haven't been able to do the things that we normally get to do we haven't been in the places we normally get to be in around the people that we love and like i feel like confidence oh my has God, really right? taken such a back seat for people and i feel like in some ways it's coming back like what i would hope well what i'm trying to do is make sure that when the world reopens like i know where i want to be when it reopens like i know what i want to be doing and i know that i don't want to be taking all of this self-doubt with me everywhere because there's no there's no point of it like it doesn't help me it doesn't help anybody else and also like you know if we if we allow ourselves to always carry these stories with us about where we are allowed to be or who we're allowed to be then we're not really giving ourselves the best chance at happiness you know we're not I giving ourselves the agree. best chance at life and if this has taught us anything it's like you know time is short and we don't know what the hell is going to happen so we've just got to do whatever makes us happy and whether that's learning a skill at 50 or you know just being like screw the stuff that i'm going to go out there with all my the people who i really respect and put my like hat in the ring like do you know what i mean like we've got we've got to do it I was watching this TED talk like just a minute ago with this woman, uh, her like her name's Robbins or Robinson Robinson, I think, or maybe it's Robbins, Mel Robbins or Mel Robinson. But she has a talk about like um, how to start screwing, how to stop screwing yourself over. Mm. And she's the psychologist who basically just works at helping to empower people to get what they want. Amazing. And, uh, and, you know, she makes a point to bring up like the odds of your existence, like the fact mm-hmm. that scientists have calculated and they've taken into account, like all of the natural disasters, all of the like dinosaurs and like, you know, all of the crazy things that have the wars and the things that have happened on the planet. And basically the, per- the, the, um, you know, it, the calculation is, you being born is like uh, one out of like 400 trillion. Wow. Maybe more. <laughs> it's, it's, it's at least 400 trillion. It could be 400,000 trillion. But like yeah. either way, the number is insane when you think <laughs> about the fact that, you know, statistically and, um, you know, uh, really the chances of you being nothing Mm. are so much huger the fact that you're anything at all but let alone a conscious being you know who's able to actually like you know co-create their own reality and existence and actually act in the world and do things that they want to do that they feel passionate about and talk to other people about it etc is kind of outlandish (laughs) so like the you know like and and you being that unique self like i mean like you you know you came here with something quite unique like Mm -hmm. you know so we just like even from a scientific perspective just thinking about the odds of being versus not being you you are already winning i love that and again i'd never thought about it like that before and that is such a empowering way to be able to view yourself and actually the the change that you can make and yeah and just the real gift that it is that we get to do anything because yeah we could have been on a fucking sheet stain do you know what i mean literally 
understand we're out here DJing <laughs> and making a difference and being people. Like that is yeah, that is a crazy way to think about it. I think I'm gonna have to look that up. I've been I've been watching a lot of um Brené Brown as well, um, who is excellent and she kind of talks about, you know, the power and vulnerability and about how like from being vulnerable and being and allowing ourselves to look at look at ourselves from different perspectives all the time and reflect like how much stronger that we can be as as people you know and 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 really talks about this whole idea that we're always learning all of us are constantly learning we're constantly on a journey and and it's only when we stop trying to learn that we stop evolving as human beings and i also really like that because yeah like we're we're here we're allowed to be here but we're also allowed to be better tomorrow than we are today you know oh maybe not even better that's not a good way to phrase it but like more informed you know more sure of, of who we are and our values and and being able to sort of stand strong in that and i think that's a really nice way to think about it because why is that like that thing that if when a shark stops swimming it dies you know and i yeah. and i love I, I think about that sometimes because yeah if you're always moving forward it means that you're yeah you're, you're you're always going somewhere and actually if you stop you stop taking advantage of this amazing thing that we have called life god yeah I, I remember and i don't really know where this quote came from but it pops into my head it's that the opposite of life isn't wait the opposite of life isn't death wait no i'm messing it up never mind ignore me <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll look it up. I'll look it up. was like the same sentiment of like you like you basically like it the opposite of life isn't isn't death but it's like lack of movement or something mm. like that like um i gotta look it up because i don't actually like real obviously i'm trying i sent you the link to that youtube uh, that ted talk or whatever oh, on amazing Instagram. thank you um but i, lo I love it because she's basically just like you like the the path to getting what you want is simple it's just not easy you have to yeah. force yourself to do it just yeah. do it you're never gonna feel like doing it just do it just fucking do it yeah and that's so yeah. important, you know, I think people really, um, well, I think, I think a lot of people just want an easy life and that's fine. You know, it's, it's fine to want an easy life, but you're not gonna, you're not gonna achieve greatness if you don't take risks, you know? And it's like actually a lot of the time that the, the most exciting things or, or the things that really are going to help you to evolve are, are the hard things. And actually, you know, moments of change and growth are some of the most painful ones that we have, but we come out from the other side of them and we're stronger people and we're more assured people. Um, and I think this idea that everything has to be easy is such a waste of, of, of thought, you know, it's like, Oh no, I just, I just want ease. It's like, well, okay. But mm. you know, ease it's, it's, it's important to always not be trying to struggle. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Like, you know, the struggle is, is not necessary all the time, but it's like, yeah, you know, you have to have those moments where you, where you're going to, where you're going to take a chance and then figure it out. You know, it's like, it's like the DJing, but on a much bigger scale, you know, allow that energy to come through when you think that something is going in the wrong direction, but you have a vision of where you want it to go. Like there's a, there's a fear there, but it will normally be fine. Yeah. Yeah. I think that what's, what's funny is that people don't always consider, you know, like the same woman in her talk is talking about how in the United States, you know, like about one third of adults are dissatisfied with their life. Mm. So maybe you've chosen a path of less resistance and there's ease in terms of the day to day, but in actuality, those feelings of dissatisfaction lead to what depression, anxiety, mm. isolation, you know, which later impacts your health significantly so it's like is it actually easier yeah or is it easier to do the things that are scary that you want to do that are authentic that are genuine mm. and then continue to grow as a person you know like it i, I think it's it's weird because it's simultaneously both like the easiest and the hardest things to yeah. do but yeah. then like once you start on that path it's kind of like you can't go can't back off. right yeah, like you, exactly. you just have to keep pushing forward um, I, I think sometimes I'm like, you know, oh, my God, how much easier would it be if I didn't, you know, 
think or talk to do about. All the things. Yeah, and like, how much <laughs> easier would it be if I just, you know, if I if I was going to be satisfied with a nine to five and like, you know, a, a like a two point five family and a picket fence, like, how much easier would that be? And it's like, yeah, but if that's not what you want then it's not going to be easier for you because you're always going to feel like there's something you're not doing. And I think that's where it can get tricky because it's like, yeah, exactly as you say, once you start going. And to be fair, that's why for a long time I didn't even engage with politics. I didn't want to know because I was like, I know, I know myself. So I know once I start going down this route, it's going to be real hard to do a U-turn. And like, sure enough, you know, when I was like mid-20s, I was working for the BBC in the news um sectors as a journalist and i was like this is it now all right then here we go here we go and time for this next phase and you know it's 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 not always easy but it's definitely i definitely feel more sure of, of what i'm trying to achieve now you know and and and, and yeah. I think what i feel and it, yeah it's definitely not an easy path but it's definitely like I, I don't think I would change it even when it's even when you're having your worst days it's like yeah this is not great but at least it's me at least it's honest at least I'm gonna at win. least it's yeah exactly at least it's honest mm. yeah oh I could literally talk to you all day in fact I think <laughs> we, we probably should at one point because oh <laughs> my god the spirituality I've had I've been having like the shittest few weeks like it's been Girl. <laughs> <laughs> so incredibly yeah. bad like to the point where I, I called up my um friends today and I was like the thing is I need some black girl healing and I think I need it now so like you know we're gonna do some healing this evening and zoom in and having like one of us is gonna lead a breathing technique and like it's just been wild like it's been a wild wild time and this is just literally it's made me feel so happy i can't even tell you you've really just yeah you've, you've made my heart go all warm and feel hopeful again so thank you so oh, much. it's mutual i thank you too for the same thing I, i've also been having a really rough time mm. um and um and i feel like it's just like, like i think we're going through you know we've just been going through it yeah like I have talked to a few girlfriends recently, you know, the whole like what's going on. And it's, it seems to be a thing that's going around where it's just like, oh, I feel like I'm just swimming upstream. Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, yeah, we're blessed to have each other and to have other women that we can just like, you know, be honest with about all that and just let it go, yeah. you know? Like, I think that's it, the hardest thing, go. isn't it though? It's the letting of the go. It's definitely yeah. that. But I think, yeah. And sometimes you need to be able to see the things to be able to let them go. And I think that's the hardest bit, isn't it? Sometimes you don't want to see it because you're like, if I see it, I can't unsee it. <laughs> and then, <laughs> I know what the fuck do I do with it? But like, no, you're so right. And it was nice, actually, when I called my friend today, she said, thank you so much for calling because like I've needed this. I just haven't reached out yet. And I'm just like, OK, cool, because, yeah, we are. We're all kind of we're all just like hanging on, you know, and it's, but it's so, it's so nice to sort of find new people to be on this journey with. Cause I think there's definitely more, yeah, there's strength in numbers, you know, there's strength in the support and the spirituality and the, and the, the visioning, the envisioning of a better tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. We can build it. We got it. We got it. All right, lovely. Have a, have a great day. It was great talking have to you. An amazing day. Well, an amazing evening. I hope uh, the party doesn't keep you up too late. <laughs> There's still something going on out there. I hear music. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Well, go and enjoy it. Have a, have a shot sure. for me. <laughs> Bye now. So there we have it, Anna Morgan. What an absolutely amazing person i hope that that rejuvenated you as much as it rejuvenated me i've got like i literally i came out of that that interview feeling so elated and even listening back to it made me feel really happy and settled and ready to go into my day so i hope it did the same for you and if you were hurriedly scribbling down all the names that she was mentioning of the amazing djs and youtube videos and everything um, i'm going to do my very best <laughs> fingers crossed very best to list them all in the bio description of this so you'll be able to find them um obviously she is also an incredible dj so if you want to listen back to the guest mix that she did um i'll also put a link to that in the in the bio um and yeah she's like one of her soma like it edit mad it's
Lisa Martin. That was actually one of my favorite radio shows I did. Um, so yeah, I'll be putting that in there too. And just yeah, go and go and have a follow of her. Um, we've got some really exciting podcasts coming up. We've got one coming up next um, next month, which is looking at halt harassment. Um, probably will be going out next month. Don't hold me to it. We never really know. The world is constantly moving, but it should be about halt harassment, um, which is kind of touching um, a bit more on the clubs nightclubs nighttime industry stuff um so yeah if i hope you've been enjoying it if you have anything that you would like me to talk about or something you want me to talk to feel free to email me um mixed bag at nioanya.com and yeah thanks for listening i'll see you next time <laughs>